precious people of God and everyone who is following, watching this video and following our ministry. Hallelujah. I want to give thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ that he has strengthened me. I want to give thanks and glory and praise to the word of Yeshua. Amen. As you can see, there is a video that I shared, uh, I think it was seven months ago, if I recall correctly. I gave a prophetic word from the Holy Spirit to, to uh, this Nigerian evangelist, Bisola Johnson, that the Lord said that people would uh, share on her, they would applaud her, they would praise her, young people, and that prophecy has come to pass, I understand. Uh, I, I must uh, admit that I didn't look too much into that case. But, however, I was not unsure. I was not uncertain when I shared the word of prophecy. Because I know when the Holy Spirit is speaking to me or revealing something to me. And then I have 120% confidence. Amen. Not because of me, but because I know who my Father is. I know the Spirit of the Lord, and I know how He works. Amen. So glory to Jesus for that prophecy confirmation. Not glory to any man, not lifting up the name of men, but lifting up the name of Yeshua. Amen. Glory to God. I can also I notice, um, I try to pay attention and to stay updated with how our videos and how things are going on on the, our social media platforms. And when I'm doing so, I can notice that some people try to tempt us, I think I would say, with doubting, doubting that the Lord is using us. For instance, there is a video I shared some years back or some, yeah, some substantial time back. I had this vision where I saw this Shiva spirit, that Hindu god Shiva, which is in uh, particularly in India and in Hinduism. And I saw that man who calls himself prophet, whom is no prophet at all, but prophet Sadhu, Selvarai is his name, if I pronounce his name correctly. I saw him and I saw that Shiva god, which has many arms. Some of you or many of you have maybe seen that uh, spirit or that God, maybe even through video games or movies and so forth. So when I share or when Prophet Zanni is sharing something like that, it is not some kind of human assumptions or something that we think. It is a revelation from the Holy Spirit. So you better watch yourself before you come and put your stupid comments on our posts and our videos when it comes to these things that the Holy Spirit is doing. You like to speak about sin against the Holy Spirit? You better wash yourself. You better wash yourself because there is not sin against the Holy Spirit to, for instance, when you talk, since we, I, I opened this video with uh, talking about Bisola Johnson. Bisola Johnson is doing what? She is, in one way, buying herself a ticket to paradise. Because she was inside of Skoan, that satanic synagogue, uh, satanic synagogue church of nations, or whatever we should label that so-called ministry. And she was inside of that deception. And she was working in that ministry. And the Lord Jesus took her out. And the Holy Spirit woke her up. So when she's working right now with the, the works that she's doing in the name of the Lord, she's daily buying herself a ticket to paradise. She's taking distance from that satanic work and when speaking about sinning against the holy spirit it's not sin against the holy spirit to speak about satanic anointing of that late tb joshua or benny hin or you name it i'm not going to mention all those names here today amen but when we are doing something and the holy spirit is speaking through us and the holy spirit is revealing something to us and we are giving ourselves over to the Lord Jesus Christ, counted as sheep to be slaughtered. And you are speaking against this. You better wash yourself. Because this is not a dark anointing. We have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The anointing of the God of Moses. The anointing of the God of the Hebrews. So if you doubt, you don't want to believe in what we say, what we share. I say goodbye. You are more than welcome. I will 
to just go find another ministry to put your stupid remarks and comments on. We are not interested in having you here. We are not interested in being together or that you connect with us if you do not have the Spirit of God or you do not want the Spirit of God which you only receive through the sacrificial works of the cross of Calvary where Jesus performed works for us so we could be saved forever. Amen. Hallelujah. So I say goodbye. If you don't believe that the Lord is using us, you should not follow us. There's many other things you could do. You should maybe use your energy and your time and your, uh, you, if you believe that you have abilities to, to look into things and discuss and reflect and uh, go join politics or something like that. Start up a business instead of uh, putting your uh, foolish comments on the different ministry platforms, at least on the ones that are true. Glory to God. The Lord is good. So praise the Lord Jesus. For his word, amen. I just want to emphasize on that. We serve Jesus Christ. And the things that we are doing is to glorify and magnify his name. For people to see that he's still doing something. For people to see that in 2022, there are people that stand firm on his word. His word does not change. His word does not change. Amen. And when we are strong in the Lord and weak in ourselves, we are giving glory to Jesus. Amen. The power of the Holy Spirit rests upon us. So the question is, people of God, do I have a word of encouragement? Do I have the word of prophecy to share? I mean, some <laughs> not the word of prophecy, uh, but a word from the Holy Book of God to share with you. Hallelujah. I had on my mind to, to uh, read from Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Listen to this. Listen to this uh, nuggets, people of God. I think I need also to uh, look up a, another translation here. Because this is the NIV translation. And uh, like I have said many times before, I like to read and study the Amplified Bible. Amen. Listen to this. Are we, from uh, 2 Corinthians 3.1, are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Or do we need, like some people, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You, you yourselves are, are letters written on our hearts. I know and read, known and read by everyone. Hallelujah. So, what Apostle Paul the great Apostle Paul is saying in this chapter is that when a man serve or a woman, a minister of God, who claim to be a minister of God, pastor, prophet, apostle, evangelist, you name it, when you are a genuine servant of God, you do not need that other people approve you. Paul is also talking about this in another place where he said that he didn't visit anyone else. Then he, he went to stay with Cephas or with Peter and Apostle Peter for 15 days. He didn't ask. He didn't, he didn't consult men for approval to go into the ministry. Because he knew that the Lord Jesus had called him, empowered him and spoken directly to him. You remember that Jesus the Messiah revealed himself. He appeared to Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus. Do we need, like some people, like some people, do we need letters of recommendation? So when you serve the Lord, and I have underscored this, and I try to open your mind to this many times, we don't need that any other great name or other great minister approves us to continue to do what we have been doing. We started with doing what we are doing now in 2017, and people were mocking us. Laughing at us, both all over the world and here in Norway, in Oslo, in our uh, network, our friends, or, yeah, God knows. I don't want to talk about that now, but people that we thought were our friends, they were laughing at us because we didn't have many followers. But you don't need followers to do what the Lord Jesus tells you to do. If you base 
the things that you are doing and the things that you wish to do and you are going to do and planning to do on that people will listen to you or what people will think about you. You have to go and sit down alone with the Lord and ask if you are ready to serve Him. Am I ready, Lord? Because I have too much focus on myself. When the Lord Jesus has called someone, they couldn't care less about what people are saying, thinking about what they are doing and saying about you or about them. This is the difference. This is the difference, you see, of being in the Holy Spirit and in the flesh. Look at uh, Jesus said about one person. The Bible said about one person that no one is greater than him. And no, who is this? Who is this person? John the Baptist. John the Baptist. Who was John the Baptist? Did he have human resources? Did he have approval from men? Did he have a nice castle? Did he have a place to rest? Did he have men speaking well about him, approving him? He walked around in the wilderness, eating locusts. That was John the Baptist. You see? And I've tried so many times to wake you up, people of God, because the Lord is not pleased with many of you. The Lord is not pleased with you because you are accumulating for yourself false teachers and prophets so they can itch your ears. You refuse to see who the true anointed servant of God is. Because you don't want a person who cannot exhibit things based on his earthly nature. In the, based on the human nature. If that person, woman or man, apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher, is not showing you cars and, and prosperity, that person for you is not the servant of God. A servant of God can be King David, rich, wealthy, a king living in a castle, having respect in the community, having respect among the people in the community, or he can be John the Baptist, running around in the wilderness, eating locusts and wild honey, but still anointed with the power of the Holy Spirit. My point is, people of God, look at where we are today. Our prophecies and the things that we are doing is going around in this world. This country, by the way, uh, Norway. We, we live in Oslo, Norway, as you know, many of you. They know what we are doing, but they are afraid to give us uh, attention. Amen. Because we serve the Lord Jesus Christ and we do not serve men. Amen. Although we conduct ourselves and we speak with wisdom with those that are on the outside. You know, the Bible is talking about this. Use wisdom. Use wisdom when you speak to those on the outside. Those who, don't, who have not been acquainted with the Lord Jesus Christ. Those who don't know the way. Use wisdom. Amen. Still, we have been doing many things in this country, in Norway and in Oslo. But they refuse to give us attention because they're afraid. They're afraid because we serve the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no only talk and talk, but the word of God is backing up the things that, or more correctly, we are doing the things we are doing based on the scriptures, based on the word of God. Do we need, like some people, letters of recommendation? Many of you have taken contact to this, with this ministry in one way or the other by uh, calling us, sending emails, uh, and uh, Facebook uh, message and so forth. Not because you have a genuine concern about the work of the Lord Jesus. Not because that your heart is beating and bleeding from the heart of God himself. But because you want us to approve you so you can take that, abuse it, for your own advantage and so that you can become prosperous and that you can use the name of our ministry to have attention to you so that you can go around in the flesh and preach and teach and whatever your, uh, your aspirations are. And the purpose is not so that people 
can repent, so that people can get to know the Lord Jesus Christ based on the sound doctrine, but the purpose is to market your and advertise yourself. We don't do that in this ministry. I repeat, we do not do that in this ministry. If you want to go around in the flesh and think that you can have one foot in the kingdom of God and another one in the world and, and acting as if you didn't have the spirit of Christ, you came to the wrong place. We don't do that here. Amen. We don't need letters of recommendation. We don't need other people that are powerful. When I say powerful, I mean that many fake ministers, they are powerful in terms of uh, with their finances and with the crowds because they teach a false message. And most people, they want a false message because the true message costs you everything. It will cost you everything. So they don't want to hear the sound doctrine, but they want to hear things that are tickling them and itching their ears. They want to hear things that the preacher have heard in the prayer closet from the evil spirits. The Bible says that demons are teaching these uh, fake ministers, pastors, or whatever they call themselves, prophets. They are teaching them the doctrine that they are handed, handing over to you. They are selling to you. And by the way, I, when I say selling, I mean uh, figuratively or metaphorically and literally. Because they are selling the word of God to you. They are selling anointed godly products to you and you are buying it you are buying it because you are looking for your own best not what is best for those lost people people that are dying and going to hell uh, to the lord to use you to restore his name out in this world like in the days of the book of acts read the book of acts where the bible says that the people on the outside meaning i.e. those people that were not born again, those people that did not know the Lord, were afraid. They had respect for the true apostles, the people on the outside. People don't respect. People don't respect Christianity today because of these fake ministers and the fake Christians and the fleshly, earthly Christians which are upholding their ministries. If you don't hear such messages, that we oftentimes, and as I am preaching to you right now, then you better find another place. Because we will never adjust and adapt ourselves to your human nature needs, to your fleshly needs. Amen. We will do everything we can. Because we also, I, Apostle Daniel, Prophet Zanni, are getting saved daily. We need to get saved daily. You know, you have been saved one time when you got to know the Lord Jesus, when you believed in your heart and you professed with your mouth. But the Bible says that you need to work every day so that you can reach the end goal, which is in Hebraic, Yeshua Eloheinu. That means God's salvation in the end. There is one salvation right now, and then you are getting saved, saved daily until the Lord Jesus comes to get us back, until you die or until you die and your spirit lifts from your body, and the Lord Jesus will receive your spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am so amazed. In, 20, uh, in 2018, I shared a prophetic word. I shared a word from the Lord, I mean, about T.B. Joshua. I said explicitly, I said, it is better that the Lord has said, told me, it is better that he dies than that he proceeds or continues with witchcraft. That word from the Lord Jesus came to pass, didn't it? You must wait so you see physically before you react. You can try to sense. You can try to open your heart to the Holy Spirit and try to sense. Oh Lord, or and sense and ask the Lord, what are you doing now? Is this from you? What are you doing in the world right now? So that I will not miss the things that you are doing. You can try to seek the Lord by studying the scriptures, nor repeating like a parrot 
different passages which you, or uh, sections of the Bible which you take out of context. But study the Word of God. Read between the lines. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to understand the depths of the Kitve HaKodesh, the Holy Scriptures. You must run around like a dumb animal. Oh, where, oh, listen here. Oh, listen to what this prophet said. Oh, this prophet said that money will fall down from heaven. A person will call you and uh, tomorrow you have $10 million on your account. You can try to sense what the Lord is doing. You know, the Bible says that in our spirit man, in our inner man, we just know. The Bible says in uh, the 8th chapter of the book of Romans, that the Holy Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are the children of Hashem. Amen. In the same way, we can know what the Lord is doing. If our heart, if we, if we are able to open our hearts to Him, if we go on our knees and we ask Him, to, and we humble ourselves before Him, to try to understand what He is doing. Do you get my point, child of God? Do you get my point? You fake Christian who need to become a true Christian, who have a chance today to repent and turn to the Lord. If you only can admit that you did not seek the Lord, although you heard the book, uh, this holy book preached, because fake people were preaching it to you. If you can admit that, yes, I have been lusting after the things that God don't want me to lust after. I have not asked you, Lord, but have asked for things according to, to satisfy my flesh. Because I'm only concerned about myself. So I can get something and abuse it. Not so that I can live for you and live for others. Be concerned about how you see things. Be concerned about what concerns you, Lord. If you are willing to make that repentance. If you are re willing to make that confession. You can still be a true child of God. The grace of God is available right now. The grace of God is available. It's available right now. We don't let anyone degrade us. We don't let anyone speak down, look down on us, as Apostle Paul said to his one of his uh, of the few authentic servants of Christ that he had, Timothy. Do not let anyone look down on you. Why? Why is that people of God? Because if we let anyone look down on us, or we are allowing ourselves to be suppressed and timid and, uh, and uh, be um, intimidated by you, because you don't believe that God is using us, we have to give account before the Lord one day. Why didn't you believe in my power which lived on the inside of you? Why didn't you give all of yourself to me? Why were you concerned about how other people saw you? What other people said about you? Didn't I die for you? Didn't I tell you to follow me and to live forever? You must give all of yourself. Not controlling tomorrow. Not controlling how other people see you. What other people say about you. But die daily. And trust in my and adhere to my power. My ability in you. Not your own. Glory to Jesus. He's still the same. Amen. So we will continue, people of God, to do what we are doing. We will proceed doing what we are doing. Because of ourselves? No. Because of our human strength? No. Because of our human wisdom? No. Because of our knowledge and personal competence? No. Because of the strength of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says... That the strength and the power that God the Father exerted when He raised Jesus from the dead is in us right now. That's why I'm strong. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. So praise the Lord. Remember that you can subscribe to our YouTube videos and hit that bell icon. So that you can stay updated with the things that the Lord Jesus is is uh, prompting us to do, using us to do with our messages, prophecies, and so forth. Everything that we do to, to magnet people to the cross of Christ and to clean up the church of God. Amen. Hallelujah. 
make a comment on this video, people of God. Make a comment and give glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. So I will see you next time. Precious. <laughs> Sorry. I will see you next time, precious sheep of God and everyone else who is watching. If you don't know the Lord Jesus yet, you can take up the book of the Gospel of John. Start reading the Gospel of John in the New Testament. But before you do that, to be, if before, in order to be able to understand what the Word of God says, you must believe in your heart that Jesus died for you, for you who is watching right now, and you must profess with your mouth that He is your Savior, that you believe in the saving works of the cross of Calvary, where Jesus died for all of your sins. Every guilt that stand, was standing against you before you are going to do this, He will cancel, He will clean you, and God will see you through Jesus Christ. It means that you will walk freely. You will be acquitted. Amen. And then you will receive the Holy Spirit. So you pray with me right now. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for me upon the cross of Calvary. I believe that I need you both now, every day, and forever. I believe that I will enter the pearly gates of heaven. When I receive you right now, Lord Jesus, I turn from my sins. I repent from a life that I've been living without depending on you. Right now, I want to live for you, Lord Jesus. I believe in my heart and I profess right now. Cleanse me. Forgive me, Lord Jesus, of every sin. Every sin that I cannot mention and label and, and list up right now, but any sin, everything I've done to offend you, God, I come by faith because of the blood of Jesus, because of the works of the cross where Jesus, the Messiah, died for me. And I receive it all and I profess right now. From now on, I will walk with you, Lord, and I will seek you and I will do my best. And if I do wrong, I know that you have forgiven me and you will give me new grace and new strength and you will give me wisdom every day. Thank you for loving me, Lord Jesus. Amen. So, people of God and everyone who is watching, the Lord is still on the throne. When the Lord is using you, you don't need to be afraid. When the time will come for you to go home to the Lord, God will take care of that himself. But before that time, you will be able to do everything you are doing. Remember how Jesus escaped the crowds when they wanted to throw him off the rock? You see, his time wasn't up yet. We have that great confidence that the Lord is using us and he's in full control. Amen. See you next time.